Rub up your engines! Now, if you're gonna buy an all-wheel drive vehicle, you want a reliable one because they're extremely expensive to work on. And the modern ones are all computer controlled. So not only are they expensive to work on, but a lot of guys don't know what the heck they're doing when they work on it. So this is a brand new WRX. Their all wheel drive systems are probably the most bulletproof in the world. Now I'll take the Subaru automatic transmissions. Not so bulletproof. <laughs> this is a standard transmission. It's a manual transmission with all wheel drive. And in his case, he lives in North Carolina. Doesn't snow much at all. He just keeps regular tires on it the whole time. But don't be confused by all wheel drive. If you've seen a previous video that I made with a WRX, the guy lived up north. He didn't put snow tires on it. He kept running into the snow bank, sliding all over the place. He said, well, you know, I'm gonna have to put snow tires on this thing. It doesn't cut the mustard. Understand, all wheel drive sends a certain amount of power to the front versus the rear, depending on the conditions. So they corner well. If you are a relatively aggressive driver, yeah, you might want all wheel drive because of the added control, but don't think it's gonna work in the snow unless you put snow tires on it. <laughs> That's just the way it goes. And then you have to realize another thing. The way the modern all wheel drive systems split power, if you do have an all wheel drive vehicle, you gotta have all four tires exactly the same. If they aren't exactly the same size, from where or you bought a different tire. It'll confuse the computer system and all the hydraulics and it can destroy parts inside your transfer case. They're not the same size. They have to be all four tires the same size. So if you buy snow tires, you gotta buy all four or you'll end up destroying the transmission and some of the internal parts on the all wheel drive system. If you really think you need an all wheel drive vehicle? Hey, a modern Subaru is not a bad choice because those systems are pretty much bulletproof. I've never seen an all wheel drive system break down in a Subaru from normal driving. I've seen them break from being in wrecks, from smashing through ditches, but I've never seen them break on their own. They are really well built all wheel drive systems. But if you're a non-aggressive driver, you often don't need an all wheel drive vehicle. It's overkill, you're paying more, they cost more money. Well, of course, in the case of Subarus, they don't cost more money because they only make them that way. <laughs> you don't have a choice. But in other manufacturers, you always pay more and in most cases, you really don't need to have all wheel drive. He and his fiance like going out in the woods and stuff. So they like the idea of having something that if they're going on an old trail, going up some old mountain roads that are dirt and gravel or whatever, he's not gonna get stuck. And they're excellent for that, you know? It does give you peace of mind. And of course, if you're looking at all wheel drive, do a lot of research on what you're looking at. Like I say, these Subarus are good, the Toyotas are really good, the Hondas are really good. You start getting into companies like Nissan, they're notorious for having problems. You're gonna look at all wheel drive, do a lot of research before you come down to what you're going to buy. Don't just say, oh, that's all wheel drive, I'm gonna buy it, because there's some crappy ones out there. You want one that is gonna last because they're super expensive to work on when they break down. This particular one is the guy's fun car. It's got 271 horsepower. Now, yes, it does have a turbocharger. There's a big old intercooler to cool the hot air down before it goes into the engine so it runs more efficiently. Turbos will have a tendency of wearing out somewhat faster. Subaru's been putting turbos on these four cylinder ones for quite some time. They won't last as long as the non turbo ones, but they have an awful lot more power. And these WRXs, these most of the ones I've seen, are still made in Japan. And they're sporty little cars. Means them on room in the back seat so you can get friends with you too. Yeah, I sound like a broken record, right? Yeah, I'll get them made in Japan. But I'm Unfortunately, it's true. The Japanese care more when they build their cars. I had a Toyota Camry station wagon I got from my wife used years ago, and it ran fine, but it rattled a lot, made a lot of noises, shook a little here and there. It was made in Kentucky. It wasn't made in Japan, and it didn't have the quality of a Japanese made car. These things are still made in Japan. It's brand new and he bought it for 33 grand. Taking consideration, the average price of a new car today in the States is 
50 grand or $500 less than that, but pretty close to 50 grand, right? Way under the price of the average new car for something that's fun to drive around in, but still practical. It's got four doors, all wheel drive. You're not gonna get stuck in the mud somewhere. They're interesting cars, cause they are pretty sporty, but they're not your traditional sports car that they're known for falling apart. They get horrible gas mileage these things don't. Now it does have 271 horsepower, so he says he averages about 25 on the highway. They have this much fun, uh, 25 miles a gallon is what you're gonna get. You always sacrifice speed for fuel economy if you're gonna get any type of car. You know, if you drove slower, you get a little bit better gas mileage. It's not horrible, not great. They started out as kind of a niche car manufacturer in the United States. People in Colorado that skied loved them. People out in the country loved them. Then they started making more cars and making them a lot faster and spiffier than the other ones. And generally, Subaru's done a pretty good job. Sure, the early ones had head gasket problems with the four cylinders. That hasn't happened for decades. They figured that out. Now, as a warning, again, everyone's gonna say I sound like a broken record, but I would not buy a six cylinder boxer engine. They make six cylinder ones. This is a four. They just had too many problems. Burning oil when they have 50, 60,000 miles. I know what it is, but they never perfected their six cylinder engine. They started with the fours. If you ask me, they should have just stuck to the fours and not tried to make something bigger and faster. Faster. So let's take this thing for a spin. Of course, it's got the Subaru boxer sound. They all have that sound. And again, this is stock. He's not planning on doing anything other than driving it around. Now, it is a sporty car, and he likes driving sporty cars. You can feel and see, well, you can't feel, but I can. The ride is a little on the rough side because they're made for handling. They're a lot of fun to drive. So we're headed to our little drag strip here, and you'll see what 271 turbocharged horses we'll do in this WRX. And here we go. But <laughs> it threw me back in the seat, yes. These things have quite a bit of acceleration. That's the fun in these cars. That's why people buy them. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that 271 horsepower is plenty enough. You don't need to start souping the thing up. Kids always do, they wanna go faster, right? This is a lot of fun, extremely reliable. You take care of it change the oil regularly you don't need to put any mods into it it's plenty fast as it is yet it's still pretty dependable especially since it's got a six-speed manual transmission plus the non-turbo subarus often have problems with their automatic transmissions and the turbocharged ones doubly so your tranny's going to wear out a lot faster if you're an aggressive driver in a subaru with a turbo and an automatic transmission and i just found out that he was lying to me because this thing is saying he's getting 28.7 miles a gallon. The all-wheel drive handles great the twisties, too. If you're a serious driver on the road, not straight line, you might think about all-wheel drive. They do handle much better. You got four wheels driving it. More control. Well, now you understand what's involved if you're buying an all-wheel drive vehicle. Extra expense, a little bit lower gas mileage, a lot better handling, rain, and of course, if you do buy four snow tires, then you got a killer machine for driving in the snow. Just how these things are set up. I've driven them with snow tires in the snow and man, they handle like a dream. Mine were rental cars and I didn't pay for the snow tires either. <laughs> but now you can make a wise decision. And if you're thinking about getting a WRX, you see what this brand new one does. It's really a nice vehicle. Guy's having a lot of fun with it and it's still practical. It's an everyday driver, gets decent gas mileage for the speed that it has. And since it is a Subaru, it's gonna be all wheel drive anyways. And if you do wanna get an all wheel drive vehicle, you could make a lot worse choice than buying a Subaru. Cause let's face the facts today, this is a brand new vehicle. You're not gonna find any all wheel drive Toyotas for 30 something grand. It's gonna be way over 30,000. This was 33. I've seen people pay 45, 55 up for the Toyotas, and that's a lot of money. I mean, if I was buying one, I never buy them new, but if I did, I'd sink twice before paying another 15, 20 grand for a vehicle when I could get one for a lot less money. 
And here's some bonus questions and answers. Randy Ramirez says, what are your thoughts about keeping a hefty supply of motor oil and oil filters in a non-controlled environment? Does oil or filters degrade where you can't use them? Very good question, and they don't. And I just read an interesting article on this. A guy found some old mobile one oil that was like 12 years old in a bottle that had been opened before, so it wasn't even sealed. And they sent it and got it tested and found out that there was absolutely nothing wrong with it whatsoever. I mean, you think about it, oil is in the ground for a million years, we get it out, right? And the filters are just filters, they're just sitting there, you know? They're not filtering anything, there's just air in them, no dirty oil or anything, so no, you can buy it and keep it for a long time, it, it, it doesn't go bad. The only thing that really goes bad is brake fluid, because it's hygroscopic, it absorbs water vapor and destroys itself. If you open a can of brake fluid, use it, throw it away if you don't use it for another couple of months, because it's no good then. That goes bad, but engine oil, transmission fluid, it doesn't. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.